We're at the Lechwidigar suit in Wales, where high birds means high excitement for Ross Neville. Woohoohoo! Come on! And we go behind the scenes at a West Country shoot where we find running foxes and high fiving fox shooters. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Unusual way to start a shoot day. This is an unusual shoot day. Ross Neville is about to shoot Lechwidigarth, probably the most challenging shoot in the UK. Is this how you start every day? There's only one way to start any shooting day, and that's with a five mile run. Why is it? I'm sure you're going to, you know, you're spending the whole day exercising, surely. Gets this going, gets this going, and I'm ready for action. Let's leave the mean streets of Oswestry where Ross is staying and drive over the border into Wales where the landscape transports you to New Zealand. But these hills are pure Welsh and perhaps as perfect a place for a pheasant shoot as anywhere in the country. Oh yes. <laughs> famous Grise. <laughs> what famous grouse is to whiskey, the Grise mountain drive is to pheasants. Plenty of it makes you happy. Before we get there, there are other drives that would be the envy of most shoots. We start in the trees, where Ross is joined by his loader, instructor, friend. I did suggest something marital about it last time we were out, but that's probably going too far. Hugo Heard. Right, when a bird comes, yeah. you take this gun. Okay. Because you will not remember no, the safety I, I catch. Won't. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you hadn't put the safety off for me. On this drive, Ross is back gun using a pair of Marukus. They've bloody come out well. Yeah, you know, I started I started with a pair of Marukus, funny enough. The first pair of guns when I really started doing this properly was a pair of Marukus and loved them. And so, you know, using a pair of Marukus today, um, the MK60 32 inch grade five, that was what I had. And just a great gun. I mean, they, they'll they'll do they do the job. They work very well. Start a gun? Would you say? I mean, if, you, if you're starting out and double gunning, can you think of a better gun? I can't because for the money, you're never gonna you're never gonna get another pair of guns for anywhere near that price. The pair of guns retails at around six thousand pounds, quite a long way short of the twenty thousand pounds plus that most of the guns on this suit cost, which is only a small multiple of the cost of the day itself. Fuck, don't say that, and then my wife will know how much it costs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a guest. She goes, bloody hell, you get invited a lot. <laughs> That's how it works, darling. <laughs> She goes, well, when are you going to invite them back? Oh, no, 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 they just like me to shoot. <laughs> back gun means that Ross and Hugo are out of the action for most of this drive. You've got to have large amounts coming through for us to get a yeah. bird that's... When they come, they are high. Yeah, look at that. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> come on! Come on. Let's just run through that bird again. It did crumple up, didn't it? Uh, you know, probably saw six or eight feet of lead and, and down it came. It's not just the jogging and the boundless enthusiasm. Ross and Hugo go to great lengths to get the best out of their shoot days. Hugo has been working on which cartridges to bring today. With the right kit, we can take these birds down at big ranges, 50, 60, 70, some of them up to 80 yards. The kit we're using, 32 inch barrels. Okay, the length of barrel isn't going to make a difference, it's just the way the gun moves. But we're, we're choked up three quarter, seven eighths. And we're using a 30, today we're using a, a FOB, 36 gram, five and a four size shot, uh, which is our favorite cartridge for pheasant. We're two days into the pheasant season. Um, and 
we're getting good kills. We're not actually getting very consistent kills today, and that isn't because of Ross's performance, it's because we've got damp cartridge. Had a big cartridge delivery last week. I would normally get cartridges on radiators at home, much to the wife's disapproval, to put some heat through the boxes. Didn't have time. Shouldn't have to do this, but we have got a damp batch of cartridge here. Um, that is showing unburnt powder residue left in the barrel. We are using plastic wads, we're allowed to use plastic wads here. It should leave a clean barrel um, and it isn't. So it's farewell to the fobs. Hugo is going to go off and work on finding different cartridges for next time. A day like today runs well thanks to the hard work of keepers, beaters, staff in the hotels where the guns stay, pickers up, cooks and waitresses at the lunch and one of the giants of British pheasant shooting, Robert Jones. It's all about high birds. Wales is well known for high pheasants. We started my business 30 odd years ago with Long Mountain. And at that time in the late 80s, Long Mountain was one of the best shoots. But as time moves on, guns get better, birds get better. And now uh, we have the stable of three gun shoots, Long Mountain, Three Valleys and Liquidy Garth. Well, a local businessman approached me to come and help develop Fleckwitty Garth. In those years, prior to us coming here, the shoot was run by the family that owned the estate at that time, Mr. and Mrs. George Stott. Uh, we took it over. It took two or three years to work it all out. And probably in the last three or four years, it's really shown it's up to its true merit. And now it goes from year to year. It is very difficult to judge shoots for their merit. Um, what we really wanted to do, we had, we still have three valleys, which we created uh, 19 years ago, and that very quickly became a very well-known shoot. Hence why we were asked to call and come in and do something with Lequity Garth. So for Lequity Garth to get to basically top of the tree or one of the best shoots in the UK in a short time was fabulous from our point of view. Robert is a genial host with a keen eye for what's going right and what's wrong on the shoot. He's popular with guns, compliments them when they're shooting straight and knows not to step in a poodle. Th th this is actually Monty, Count to Monte Cristo. He is the best dog I've ever had for picking up birds. What kind of birds would those be? Well, predominantly in Hyde Park. <laughs> Robert's right-hand man is Martin Lott. He is new on Robert's shoots, learning to cope with the demands of the job and, of course, growing one leg longer than the other so he can walk around these steep hills. Um, you know, we get teams from all over the world shooting here. Um, Ross come over from America um, and that's, that's what attracts them. These are very, very tricky birds and, and you wouldn't come and pay the money to, to miss, as it were. Back to the shooting and Ross is where he wants to be. So this is my favourite drive, Grise Mountain. Uh, I've been coming here now for four years and it, every time it's utterly epic and it's just Grise Mountain is my dream. It's just because they're monster after monster after monster, you know. With here at Grise Mountain, solid for half an hour, consistent birds over and over again at, you know, 70 plus yards and there's not many places that you can do that and Grise Mountain is probably one of the one of the only places also Tommy's at Brigands. Excellent keepering makes this perhaps the world's top drive. I mean lots could go wrong I mean if you you know if you had a dusting of snow up there it must drive them down. Um, yes but we've got good cover crop at the top of the mountain um, and they drive them out of there. Uh, snow can even help because we feed them in the right places in it and it keeps them where we need them to be. Well different ways of uh, either out of woodland natural cover or creating our own natural cover by growing uh, conifers, leylandies, we put those in about five six years ago at Grise Mountain. We created that drive it was never a drive before and uh, yeah, it's just a dream piece of ground. It's not just that one pellet fluke. If you have the right gun and the right cartridges, you can consistently hit them between 60 and 90 yards. Maybe not consistently in 90, but certainly at that sort of 70 to 80 mark, you can. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, come on! For more about the Maruku pair, visit browning.eu. I'll remember to put the safety catch on. And to go shooting at Lequidigarth or on one of Robert's other shoots, visit longmountain.co.uk. In a couple of weeks' time, we will show how Ross gets on at that other great Welsh shoot, Brigands. He will be using the Marukus again, this time with a butt pad, which is bound to cause amusement for Ross's seven-year-old son, Winston, for whom he records this message. And Winston, that is a butt pad. Nothing to do with the bottom. Incredible birds, incredible shooting and an incredible landscape. Thank you Browning for letting us take the Marukus up to Lechwidigar. Now to David and somehow I hope we will never find out why he's in the dark this week with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Two aunties have been fined for assaulting a Hunt supporter. Hunt saboteurs Paula Lamont with the red rucksack and Emily Hepburn, or Fox, with the red hair, were found guilty of assault on Charlotte tyres, shown in this video, and fined more than £2,000. Thanks to Charlotte for sending in this film. Meanwhile, a film shot by the aunties shows a farmer ordering them off his land. The farmer drives at a group of aunties who are trying to sabotage the Atherston hunt and asks them to get off his land. There's a Boer war in the Forest of Dean. Aunties out trying to stop the badger cull in the area have taken to vandalising high seats, which the Forestry Commission has put up so its shooters can control the local wild boar population. One of the aunties got a write-up in the Guardian newspaper, which called him a pixie, meant as a compliment. The new field sports sensation in Australia is a huntress in a hijab. Muslim mother of four Khadija Assad from Sydney is teaching her children how to shoot in the Australian bush. She whispers an Arabic prayer before she pulls the trigger, before taking her halal bounty home to eat. She hunts goats, foxes, rabbits and deer on public land in New South Wales. In a desperate attempt to find news, the Daily Mirror has run a feature on a squirrel shooting group on Facebook. It features the excellent Grey Squirrel Hunters UK group, calling them Vigil Antis, involved in a sick trade. It comes in the week that the Home Office announces it is to review air gun laws in England and Wales. And finally, with hunting seasons opening all over the world, maybe the most unusual is that of Trinidad and Tobago. It is now open season on iguanas, and they make a great curry, apparently. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News in the Dark. Stuck in stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. You can explain yourself next week. Next up, I go fox shooting in my home county of Somerset. Ever seen fox shooters as happy as this? Ollie and Stephen have something to celebrate. A good night lamping foxes around a shoot in West Somerset. Ollie is a keeper here, and after caring for guns in the daytime, then going deer stalking, Fox shooting is how he spends his nights. Amazing, he's so well tempered. Stephen is a keen deer stalker, and tonight, while Ollie's Archer night vision scope is off for servicing, he is Ollie's lamper. First fox is high up on a hill. It is one that Ollie's been after for a while. We always see it around there, just haven't, haven't been able to get a shot. He's, uh, he didn't like the lamp, as you saw, but you know. He, um, we, we outwitted him. He had his day, which is a mean thing. I, I would have said it was 300 yards, definitely, something like that, anyway. Well, but no? Not 100 yards off, maybe. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, it died. You're more than used to shooting across a valley like that, though, aren't you? Mm. That distance. Don't trust Ollie for range finding. We measure it in daylight, 295 yards. But you can trust him for shooting. Fox number two allows us to talk about backstops. You can see a hedge, but you can't see that the next stop behind the fox is Taunton. Ollie and Stephen are binary about backstops. So generally you have or you haven't, it's pretty definitive. Maybe but no backstop, back no shot, it's as simple as that, isn't it? You don't, you don't risk anything. Now, keen-eyed lampers will have noticed certain customizations on this quad bike. Ollie has made it as comfortable a workstation as any keeper could hope. However, that means there is lots to go wrong. Stephen turns on the lamp and it has stopped working. To start with, Ollie blames Stephen. Oh, he's there, he's there. Let's have a look at him. He's 
he's alright, so what have you done to it, Stephen? Or was this not sprayed at the end of it? How do you manage it? Well, I guess it was wrapped around my foot there. After some fiddling with wires and pliers, they work it out. Ollie had sat on the cable. Stephen blames Ollie. Well, I don't know admit it to Ollie, but you know, over Christmas last year he put on a bit and he must have been one of his yeah, ass cheeks. Of yeah, 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 he's lost a bit. <laughs> no, uh, we, uh, we always have a little bit of a moan at each other out soon, don't we? The next fox does not help Ollie's state of mind. Then we reach the field of fox shooting dreams. Three animals are visible to Ollie using his thermal imager to spot them. Then Stephen lamps and Ollie shoots. Well, he would shoot, but this fox keeps on running. The lads use a rabbit squeak to bring a fox in. When it comes to stopping a fox, they go a bit freelance. Uh -huh. Hey! It's still a great result and a great running shot, but it spooks fox number two, which sets off at top speed. Seen, seen a few down there last time we went out, but um, I wasn't expecting to be able to shoot two straight off. Um, so it was good, good news, really. It all, all came together. And that was quite odd how it reacted, actually squeaking away. We tried stopping it a few times. Um, it's always embarrassing when you whistle up and something never stops. It happens, it does happen. Um, but when we were squeaking and it was coming in again, it, I'm sure it looked all very amateur, but it seemed to it seemed to work anyway. It's a dead fox at the end of the day. But um, off camera, the third fox, which we uh, I don't know if any, many of you seen it. Ollie obviously had eyes on it all the time with the thermal, but that was very odd how it sort of came back in for a bit and sat on the top of the hill, and then we never seen it again after that. Well, I thought for a minute we might have had all three, but there we are. That second fox was a nice clean shot, but you can see how its adrenaline keeps it running after it is dead. It, uh, it still managed to go on for sort of 20, 30 yards before it decided to give up. It is an odd shot reaction for something like, you know, fragmenting tip, isn't it? Where you put it, you'd well, expect it to yeah. drop, wouldn't you? There we go. But yeah, it didn't. It has been a successful night and well worth a high five. <laughs> we always hug and kiss before we go at the end oh. of the night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads, calm down. Well, that was great fun. Thank you to Ollie and to Stephen for that outing. Now to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. My favourite film of the week is Hunting Wild Boar with the 1867 Verndal Rifle. Cap and Ball is in Northern Hungary and explains the attraction of using ancient firearms with open sights and black powder reloaded cartridges. And he takes an 8x67 Kiplauf rifle as backup. Juan de Dios Bonilla is after Wild Boar and Red Deer in Spain on a traditional Spanish Monteria. Staying with driven shooting for a sense of the extraordinary volume on some British pheasant shoots, gunmaker William Powell has put up an amazing drive at Drumlanrig. With the whitetail season absorbing almost all US hunters at the moment, one of the top deer hunting channels, GrowingDeer.tv, has brought out a best of film. No shooting, just great white tails. Preppers be happy. Wilderness Outfitters is moving some of its pay TV series onto YouTube. This is Pathfinder School of Modern Trapping, Episode 5. The American organization Ducks Unlimited has started putting a new series of full programs onto YouTube. This is DUTV 2016, Episode 1, Nebraska Teal. In Australia, Peter Nobes is out after foxes again. He shoots three with his ticker in 204. And finally, here's a different kind of hunting also done under Wreckfish West's Crayfish Promo Video 2017 shows what fun you can have in Western Australia's world-class cray fishery. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Well, that is it for this week. If you have not done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click the like us there on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Or you can pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.